Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at Kenny Shape. This is kind of an impromptu video because I had just received an email saying that Kenny Shape had received a major update. And because of the nature update, I figured I would cover this. In the past, I said I wasn't going to cover this application anymore, but they made a major update which alleviates one of the two limiting factors. So I do believe that this is much more useful now. So I wanted to give credit where credit is due and let you know about the update to this application. So a couple things. A, they changed the name. It used to be called Ken Shape. Now it's Kenny Shape. That's just because the publisher's name is Kenny. So they probably figured more consistent branding. So you might see other videos that say Ken Shape, same application. Okay, as far as actual meaningful changes, A, they gave you the samples browser now, because before you'd come up to the main menu, you would choose like open or import, and it just brought up your typical Windows file browser. So now they gave you a custom browser, and it just has all the different shapes that are available. I'm not going to open up these individually, but as you can see, there's icons, seven pages worth. I believe all these are new. Survival. Transportation, weapons, okay, so uh, quality of life as well as actual content. Next, let's click on a project size. They added 10 new shapes. I'm not sure if it's necessarily the 10 at the bottom or not, but they've added 10 more shapes, so there are more there now. In the major update, which we're now going to spend the rest of the video talking about, and it's easier to show than to explain because if I explain it, it sounds way too technical. It's easier to show it. So let's take a block. Let's take a color. We'll use that color. And let's just draw a super simple house. Okay. Switch colors and switch shapes and shapes can be rotated that's just using the scroll wheel and now we'll use the block shape again Now we add a door, so we'll also use brown for that. Well, for the frame anyways. That's probably too big. Let's do that. We'll fill that back in. That was an error. And we'll just choose some other color for the door. doesn't matter what. Okay, so this used to both draw color and extrude symmetrically. So if I was to go to depth and then choose a depth, say I chose eight because this is flat and I don't want it to be flat, I want it to be a house. See how it's extruding in both directions? Basically what you're doing is you're drawing the middle plane and then extruding out. Well, clearly you don't want it to extrude out both directions. So now you can choose on a block by block basis extrusion. You couldn't do that before. You could say extrude in both directions, extrude every block in one direction. Now on a block by block basis, you can change, choose extrusion. So let's change that back to one. Now, if I were to click up here, and this is how you access the new functionality, the back side, you can see it turns into equal signs, that symbol right here that button right there. So what that's saying is that everything on this side is equal to the other side. We don't want it to be equal. We want it to be extruded. So let's change these all to eights. I probably could use the paint tool or fill tool, that right there. But we'll just do this manually. See the difference? It did not extrude forward and back. It only extruded backwards. Now, again, like I said, you had the ability to extrude the whole thing in one direction. So that's not new. But now you can do this on a block by block basis. So let's go back to the front. 
And let's bring the door frame and the door out. So let's go, say, two. Oops. And two. I just got to clean up the ones on the side. There we go. There we go. So now I've extruded the door frame and the door. Let's also extrude the roof. Now we've got our super simple little house. But it gets even better because even though this isn't extruded, it's painted and we don't want it to be painted unless you want a door on both sides. But say you don't want a door on the back, what would you do? We'll go back to drawer. We go back to this. So the front and the back is accessible for drawer and for paint. And now we'll just use that color and cover it up. And we'll go back to model. And there you go. So it looks like, uh, let's extrude the roof as well. So that means we need to change the house to seven. So we'll do this. Okay, there you go. And again, this was just really quick, but you definitely could not do this before. You could not do the color after the fact like that. You had to keep the color symmetrical. You had to keep the extrusion symmetrical. And like I said, you could do extrusion in one direction rather than both but it had to be every single block in that direction so in other words rather than using the middle plane you're using like the front or the back now you can still use the middle plane but now you can choose how much you extrude in each, in each direction now because this is symmetrical it, not symmetrical excuse me because it's very simple it it might not look that impressive but you could do things like you could make a missing brick so let's see, I got rid of all the equal signs. So I could do it on either side. So let's do, actually, let's do it. Those are all one. So let's do it here. So let's do like a six. You couldn't do something like that. You couldn't do that kind of, you know, accurate pinpoint that it, you'd have this whole depth be removed. I know I'm kind of making a hash of the explanation. It's really tough to explain, but very easy to show. Um, it, it, like I said, that it, the technical term that I use was symmetrical or asymmetrical extrusion. But that kind of doesn't do it justice. You really need to see it in action. So as I said at the top of the video, I do believe that because they added this feature, that this is a more useful application now. It's not just window dressing. It makes a huge difference, and I would say that this is absolutely a tool you'd want for your toolbox now, even if it's just for placeholder graphics. Obviously, this isn't like meant to be high-end, but if you need something basic, just to kind of hold an idea, put stuff, again, placeholder graphics, something that you're doing a proof of concept, I don't think that this was worth it before, but now because of this additional functionality i do believe that this is worth it i do believe that this would be a good tool particularly if they continue to support it that i don't know the one limitation that i will call out not to be negative but because uh, i previously talked about what i saw as the two limitations not having asymmetrical extrusion was one the other was that you have a max extrusion of eight that has not changed I had an exchange with them a few months ago, and what they said is they didn't want to increase the level of extrusion for UI reasons. In other words, how do you do a double digit? You would have to make each block like even bigger. And also, I guess you can use the keyboard to put in the value. I don't know if anyone would actually do that, but they're like, well, if there's 10 or 11 or 12, you can't do that. You can't hit just one key. So my recommendation was to go to a version of hexadecimal, that if it's over nine, then you use A, B, C, D, E, F, that kind of thing. Uh, clearly, they did not do that, and that's their choice. This is their application. They can do whatever they want with it. But I find it a little challenging that, to me, saying that they're not going to do functionality because of the UI that is tail wagging the dog. That is, well, because of the UI, 
we can't add functionality. The UI should support the functionality, not constrain the functionality. And I'm pretty sure I went off on a rant about that before, so I won't go off on it again. But credit where credit is due. They said they weren't going to do this, and they did, so kudos to them. Uh, there were numerous people on uh, the forums for this application on itch.io. They, from the very beginning, they said they wanted to see this. So, you know, good on the developers for actually adding this functionality. We'll see if they ever make this change. I have no prediction because they said they wouldn't do this, and yet they did. So uh, good on them. So that's about it. That's really all I wanted to cover. So yes, I do believe that uh, this is a more useful tool. It's available on itch.io. Again, I believe it's $3.99 USD, so $4 USD. Decide for yourself if you feel that it's worth it. And I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this useful. Hope it helps you make an informed decision. And as always, please do enjoy the rest of your day.